2018 was before WebAssembly. And at that time, I was working at VMware on what is known today as Tenzu Service Mesh. In the team, I was in charge of everything DevOps. As such, I worked closely with a small group of developers. One day, one of them came to me and said, Emmanuel, come over here. I want to show you something. I went. When in front of me, he demoed a custom filter. In his demo, I witnessed how with a filter, SQL queries can be introspected. Our runtime statistics can be captured in a way that is completely transparent to the database server. I was fascinated. I asked the developer how he had done it. He went on to describe this step by step. First, he said, I forked the Envoy source code. I built the extension in C++, rebuilt Envoy to finally test the resulting binary. He was a C++ expert. And as a DevOps, I thought there was no way I could write a custom filter. But you know what you can do, he said. Now that I'm done, you can package my code in a Docker image, distribute the image in all of our environments, update the version of Envoy in all of our dev staging and pod clusters. And of course, as a DevSecOps, Emmanuel, do not forget to incorporate patches and other improvements. Thanks. It turns out that back then, what we were working on is what is today the Envoy native MySQL filter. Fast forward to present days. I joined another company. Three months ago, I, I was hired by American Express where I joined the identity group. As such, once completed with the onboarding process, I was immediately approached by the team that managed all of our IPI gateways. We are migrating to Envoy, they said. With the expected number of requests, we need to squeeze as much performance from this proxy as we can get. Emmanuel, can you help? Of course, I immediately thought of using the open policy agent, OPA, but I quickly found out that with custom policies and required support for A plus type of JoToken, OPA was useless. What those people were really asking me was if I could write a custom filter. Thanks. So I started reading the docs. And this is when I learned about WebAssembly. With Wasm, Envoy doesn't need to be recompiled. Filters do not need to be written in C++. Thanks to LDS, custom filters can now be dynamically loaded. At American Express, we are currently evaluating the Glue API gateway from solo.io. There is an open source version with which anyone, I, you, can get started. I got started with WebAssembly simply by going through their WebAssembly Hub tutorial. During this tutorial, you will just add a header to your request, but also you will be introduced to the WASMI CLI. WASMI init to create a scaffold or boilerplate code, WASMI build to compile your code to WASM, to WASM file, WASMI push to push it to a public registry called WebAssembly Hub, very similar to Docker Hub, but for WASM filter. And finally, once you're done publishing your filter to deploy it, you can simply use WASMI deploy. Now, if you are using Istio to deploy a filter, you are even given the alternative of using a custom resource definition. As a DevOps, I really love what solo.io is doing. Now, if, like me, you are curious and you want to find out how the configuration of your Envoy has changed during the deployment of your filter, you can simply connect to the Envoy admin UI. To do so, kube control port forward to the pod with the proxy you want to introspect, select the Envoy container, and map the port of its admin interface to a port on your local host. After doing so, you will be able to connect to Envoy in particular to the admin interface using a web browser. Then select config dump to see your Envoy's active configuration. The configuration snippet on this slide is what is added for WASM filter. 
This YAML blob may seem a little bit complicated to those of you who are new to Envoy. But essentially, to configure and filter, you need to provide a runtime. Here, it's a runtime V8, and the location of your WASM bytecode. Here, a local file. Now, as described earlier, to use your filter on Kubernetes, you need to compile your filter locally, package it, push it to WebAssembly, deploy it with a CRD, and wait for the deployment to complete. This workflow is awesome, but is way too slow for development purpose. For the development of your filter, you need a much faster turnaround, higher velocity. To achieve this, a solution is to use Docker Compose. This diagram represents my first iteration in Docker Compose, but ultimately I was left with a question. With Wasm, can you do more than just add, remove, update headers? To find the answer to that question and develop my authorization filter, I started iterating. I iterated. I experimented. I read the available, the available but limited documentation. I went online trying to find examples. I looked at the source code and occasionally reached out on Slack to select people. Given the current lack of documentation for proxy wasm, you may think it's a bit early to get started. But what I found is that if you know where to, where to look, the answers are already there. Now, before you get started, a couple of warning. First, today, Vanilla Envoy does not support Wasm. To experiment with Wasm, like me, you will have to use a recent version of Glue Envoy or Istio Proxy. In addition, today, the implementation of the application binary interface or ABI is near completion, but is not 100% completed. As a result, when you upgrade from one version of Envoy to the next, you may have to tweak the source code of your filter. So you iterate, you iterate, until you finally arrive to something that looks like this. Don't tilt your head. I'm not expecting you to understand the details just yet. Let me just say that I am now using several Envoy proxies, different versions, and Wasm extensions are everywhere. Now let me share some of the key highlights on what I learned. Let me start by introducing to you YTT. YTT, the YAML templating tool. If you have ever dealt with YAML configuration file, which I'm sure everyone, everyone here has, stop watching this video right now and immediately go to httpcarvel.dev. Check YTT, this tool is fantastic. To give you a preview, the YTT CLI takes for input a YAML file, parses its contents, look for the commands, and replace the commands with the content of other YAML files. In short, this allows for a YAML file to import other YAML files. On this slide, I extracted the code snippet for my input configuration. The transformation of this original YAML file is possible thanks to a programming language very similar to Python called Starlark. As a result, now instead of having to deal with lengthy, unending, confusing YAML files, you can work at the level of components, such as individual filters, or even group of components, such as group of filters. By far, in this project, YTT is a command line utility that gave me the most productivity boost. Check it out. A word about programming language you can use with ProxyWasm. One of the promises of ProxyWasm is to allow the programming of Envoy extension with non C programming languages. If you want to write a proxy extension today, there are four programming languages available. They are C, Rust, assembly script, and Go. Starting from the bottom, Go through Tiny Go is the latest addition to the list. It's very new. I have not personally tried Tiny Go to write a WASM filter. But based on my reading, the main issue with Go or similar programming language is that no WASM VM or WASM sandbox can yet deal with garbage collection. Then you have assembly script, a strongly typed JavaScript 
which is promoted in our community by solo.io. AssemblyScript defines itself as a language made for WASM. After experimenting with it, I was immediately confronted with a limited number of libraries. Therefore, it is my opinion that AssemblyScript is not yet made for proxy WASM just yet. Then you have Rust. Like AssemblyScript, Rust itself is a relatively new programming language. And I thought Rust has very strong potential. Most of us, most of us would have to learn it. Finally, back to C++. Certainly the core developers of Envoy, Istio, Envoy Wasm are all well versed with C++. Most examples of Wasm filter are found online or are written in C++. Additionally, if like me, in a past life, you had to program embedded systems, C++ would clearly be the winning choice. Indeed, compiling C++ code to JavaScript to run in LLVM, a VM runtime, is very similar to embedded system programming. As such, today, it is my, my opinion that proxy was fail on its promise of using a non C++ programming language. But thankfully, the ecosystem is fast evolving. Regardless of the programming language you choose, you will have to understand the application binary interface. Your compile code, your WASM extension, is running in a WASM sandbox, an interface with Envoy using this ABI. You can find the description of the ABI in the software development kit of your chosen programming language. You can think of your WASM extension as a library that needs to implement a given set of functions or methods that Envoy thread will call. For example, when you bootstrap Envoy, the WASM sandbox also starts the onStart method is called. Likewise, when a request is processed by the listener to which your filter is attached, the onRequestHeader, onRequestBody methods will trigger. This is what is represented in blue on this slide as the Envoy extension lifecycle. But Envoy must also be thought of as the operating system of the WASM sandbox. Indeed, in your WASM filter, if you want to introspect the request headers, read write in memory, execute an external HTTP call, you will need to call foreign functions. To illustrate with my authorization project, I use the get request header function on the author authorization header to extract the authorization header to find out its content. In my case, the content of that header is a request pay her token. If like me, you choose to build your extension in C++, you will need to understand Bazel. Bazel is a build tool developed by Google, similar to CMake, Maven, or even the simpler GlueMake. It is used to compile C++ code of your filter. I am sure several of you I've had some exposure to Bazel because Bazel, as it turns out, is also used to build and compile Envoy. For those of you who are new to Bazel, there are two concepts or files that are important. First, the workspace file. This is where you define all of your external dependencies and how to import them. In the workspace file for your C++ WASM extension, you will need at the minimum to import the unscripted compiler and toolchain required to compile C++ to run in the V8. And two, you will need to fetch a code that describes the application binary interface. This can be done by importing the sources of Istio proxy. The second concept to understand with Bazel is a build file. This is where you define your targets, what you want to build. In Bazel, you define targets by using predefined by using predefined or custom macros written in Starlark. Those macros uh, in Bazel are called Bazel rules. At the bottom left, I show the Bazel rule to build a custom library. At the bottom right, I show the Bazel command to build it. Now, 
without entering too much in the details, I would like to share some of the external dependencies I imported in my Bezel workspace. The Google Test Framework, very useful to test custom libraries. Boost, yes, the very popular C++ Boost library, a must-have for C++ filters of medium to advanced complexity. Rapid JSON. In my case that I use to manipulate JSON documents such as my authorization policy or my BR token claims. Finally, once all the dependencies are imported in your workspace, the next thing is to build the WASM file. This is done here with the WASM CC binary Starlack macro. In English, what that Bezel rule means is to build the binary file worker app token WASM compile the source file worker app token.cc and link the resulting object to the ABI, boost, rapid JSON, and my custom library. Now let's get out of the weeds and go back to a higher level. There are two types of WASM extension. The first type are WASM filters. Attached to listener can therefore dynamically be configured with a listener discovery service or LDS and are triggered by a request. The second type of WASM extensions are singletons. In the next few, few slides, I will introduce them. But before I do so, I'd like to share or convey that filters and singletons can communicate with each other. This is done by using either a message queue or shared data or in a, in a shared memory. Let me illustrate all of this with my filter and my singleton in my authorization project. Let's go back for this to the Docker Compose development environment I flashed earlier. And let's zoom in on one of my Envoy. On this Istio Envoy, three listeners and the admin interface have been configured. At the top of your screen on port 8080 is a listener I use to simulate an Envoy sidecar to HTTP build. Just below on port 8007 is a listener configured with a WASM filter and a simulated backend. Such a configuration is extremely useful for performance measurements. For example, using Fortio, a load generator, you can send requests and measure the impact of your WASM filter on latency. Finally, on port 8443 is a listener of interest. This listener uses a WASM filter chain and a singleton stack. Now, here is an, is an early version of my singleton stack. Its purpose is to fetch and then refresh the local copy of American Express authorization policy. As you can see, singletons are not on the request path. And therefore, their number and performance have no impact on request latency. In my case, the execution of my singleton is triggered at regular interval by a timer. Every 10 seconds, the top one pulls from a remote location a document assumed to be the global authorization policy. That documentation, that document is fetched and then stored in shared memory. The bottom one, every 10 seconds read the document stored in shared memory and execute and put validation. Now, you may wonder why we have several singleton instances instead of just one. The short answer is that we are experimenting. But one clear advantage with this approach is that we maximize, we can maximize code reuse. And additionally, if we want to upgrade an individual component, we minimize disruption. As mentioned earlier at American Express, we support, we support different types of JSON web token. Depicted at the center of this slide are three filters for validating user, application, and Spire web token. At both extremes are two filters I call bookends. Indeed, the purpose of the, fil the first filter at the extreme left is to do a deep introspection of a request and to mark which upstream filter should process it. Meanwhile, the purpose of the last filter at the extreme right is to make sure that the request has been properly processed. 
It turns out that WASM filters have another way to communicate with one another by using the request itself. This can be done with metadata or with what I call hidden request header. Again, we are just experimenting. So what's next? The end of this presentation is still to be written. But besides some new additional requirements I was given, last week, Solo released a new version of the API gateway with better WASM support. Additionally, I just found out that Tetris has upgraded their get, their get Envoy CLI to build in Rust a filter scaffold. So clearly, I will continue exploring. Now, let me turn the question around and ask what's next for you? If on one hand, you are interested in better understanding Envoy, I encourage you to play with WASM. If, on the other hand, you are contemplating getting serious with WASM and Envoy, I'd love to hear from you and potentially help. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for attending my presentation. I, I have uh, this presentation was recorded a few days ago, and uh, I shared with uh, the video with the meeting organizer, and a few things happened in between. And I have to say that a lot of innovation is being done with Envoy in the WASM space. The first thing that happened uh, last weekend is that uh, uh, to date, as I mentioned in the video, you had to use a specific version of Envoy to, uh, to, to experiment with WASM. It turns out that the WASM Envoy, or the source code of the, the, the new addition has been now merged into into Envoy, into the upstream of Envoy, which means that soon, I think it will start in version 117. In the version 117 of Envoy, WASM will be available everywhere. Something else I haven't talked about, uh, about uh, in this presentation, not too much, because lack of time maybe, was about uh, metrics and, and, and logs as well. It turns out that uh, WASM filters, just like native filters, can also uh, act with envoys and communicate with the outside world using Prometheus metrics or metrics published. Those metrics will be published in the admin uh, in the admin interface, which is in the same admin UI I introduced earlier, at the slash uh, stats path. So you can, from your WASM filter, you can add metrics that could be meaningful. In, in my particular case, for example, in my singletons, I'm looking into finding out why my filters uh, would not behave correctly. For example, if I'm trying to reach out the policy and for some reason I cannot policy, I would want to know that. Of course, once your metrics are in Prometheus, if you're interested, you can also, uh, you can also uh, alert on some, on some triggers, which may be useful as well. To develop my filter, um, I'm using logs also. Actually, that's my main source of troubleshooting. And uh, when you start Envoys, uh, you can specify some command line parameters, uh, such as component logs. So this is really on the command line of Envoy. So if you use the containers, you will have to pass this as, uh, as the command parameters to the Envoy process itself. And you can specify the log level of components. And in particular, there is a component for all WASM filter, which is called WASM. And you can set this, uh, this Envoy component called WASM to the level debug, and then you will, see, you will be able to see all the debug level messages, which is quite useful when you are uh, troubleshooting. That being said, when it's in production, make sure that you do not uh, run your Envoy in debug level, including for WASM filters. It turns out also that uh, in the past few days, I have been experimenting with uh, Get Envoy CLI, Get Envoy CLI, which I just talked about, uh, which offers a Rust, um, a Rust uh, scaffold to develop filters. I'm really getting started with this. Uh, I am very pleased by what Rust provides in terms of the uh, developer experience. And um, 
I'm really looking forward to it. So there are some, uh, you don't have to deal with Bezos anymore because there is no, there is cargo, there is a concept of traits. You have also tests that are integrated in a language. And uh, I'm kind of uh, uh, experimenting again with this. What I found is that if you put too many, lab too many libraries into uh, WASM filters, you end up having the WASM binary itself becomes larger and larger. And uh, I'm wondering if we should not be monitoring the size of the WASM filter. Obviously, in my case, it's being fetched from a remote location. But uh, you have also the concepts of uh, concurrencies. And uh, I, I do not know yet if the size of the filter is something that should be monitored, in which case C++ or even assembly script, which had the smallest size for what I've seen. Uh, C++, you can really take only exactly what you need. I'm not so sure if it's possible with Rust. I assume it is, but um, so far, the, what I've been, what I found with Rust is that my filter was just to add or extract headers was a little bit too big to my to my test. Another thing I I want to talk about is about performance, and it turns out that um, over an external authorization filter such as OPA, and compared to a WASM filter which is completely uh, compiled in or running inside Envoy. I think you can have about uh, uh, 20 times improvement in performance, which is significant. Uh, that being said, uh, with WASM, you have also the concept of runtime. And I talked about the runtime. The runtime that I've been using was mostly the V8 sandbox, which I think is the most mature to date. But there are other sandbox that are coming. With the V8 sandbox, really, uh, compared to nat native filters, you can get you can reach approximately 40% of the performance of a native filter, which is quite significant. Uh, but some new type of runtime are on the way where you will be able to uh, get even closer to native performance. There is uh, the WebVM, which is uh, with, uh, uh, which, with which you, are, you would be expected to reach about 90% uh, 90% of the performance of native filters and null VM where basically you are using the WASM SDK, but it's actually almost compiled in, into, uh, into Envoy. Um, so uh, it's quite possible in the future that uh, native filters will be built into WASM to benefit from the fact that you can uh, bring them in and out uh, based on the configuration of the filter itself. I looked at uh, at performance of uh, you know from a request performance. As I said, uh, filters was um, on the request path. Uh, in my particular case, right, I, I want to make sure I'm getting as much performance as possible. As you have seen in the architecture I have right now, I have several filters. I don't know if it's the right strategy on the request path, at least. Uh, and, but that's something I will have to 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 find out. And the way I I do it, or I intend to do it, is by using Fortio. I briefly talked about this, and to try to um, to experiment uh, with uh, the architecture of the system. It turns out that uh, right now, instead of trying to improve the performance, I've been uh, trying to saturate my create a filter that slows down the request to see what would be the behavior of uh, of Envoy when it's being saturated. And uh, that's something that is very interesting to me to see what, what is the expected behavior of Envoy itself with WASM, with WASM feed. Working on, 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 on getting the highest performance as possible, I've been trying actually to build a filter that literally slows down my request and sleeps and, and send the request, you know, half a second later on. Then I send a lot of requests and I look at what Envoy does. Uh, uh, that's, for me, that's interesting. That's something that I'm exploring as well. I, uh, to conclude, really, um, I, if you think about if you think about what WebAssembly is, really, um, and if you have been working with uh, uh, with uh, with containers for a while, I think it has the potential to be to have a huge impact in the container space. Um, for example, uh, some people say you can replace containers themselves with web, uh, WebAssembly. And actually, that's something I looked at. I wanted actually at some point to have a WebAssembly singleton that would read my policy, transform it into a regular policy, and feed it to uh, the OPA uh, external filter. Uh, I have not completed the work, but I was thinking, oh, you know, that would allow us to migrate from our custom policies to something that is more open, which would be the OPA uh, open policy agent 
uh, rego policies and to try to see if that's a way to do the transition. But if you work also with uh, function as a service, you can see that actually what Envoy is, it's really invoking functions. And those functions are actually the function that, here, that are in my, in my WASM filter. And uh, in the space of uh, function as a service, um, you know, uh, WASM can have a huge impact. Lots of work is being done there. Uh, I encourage you to have a look at it. And finally, the last notes, I think uh, uh, there is, uh, as I said, Envoy, um, the, the WASM extension has been merged into the upstream on Envoy. Even so, the code has been merged. There is still a lot of work in terms of the documentation that needs to happen. There is no documentation there. I think it will be there in the 1.17 uh, version of Envoy documentation. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities for some of you, including myself for that matter, to, to contribute to the open source community that way. And uh, if you do not know how to do that, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to, to help you out in any way I can. You can find me, of course, on the Envoy Slack channel and a few others as well. So I look forward to hearing from you very soon. Thank you.